Hello, my name is David Matkin, and thank you for checking out this video where we're going to explore the answers to the question, what are assets? This video is one in a series of videos on public financial management and is really oriented toward students of public administration and public affairs. One thing to note is in this video, we're going to look at the definition of assets through the eyes of accrual accounting and not through modified accrual, which is also used in public organizations. In their most generic form, assets are economic resources that are legally owned by an entity and have monetary value that can be objectively determined. Before I move on, I want to focus some attention on two of these terms, economic resources and entity. In the accrual basis of accounting, we use the adjective economic to refer to resources that are stores of value over which ownership rights can be enforced to produce benefits over short, medium, and long-term horizons. Other bases of accounting focus on shorter-term horizons, like modified accrual. The term entity is a generic label for the organizational unit for which resources are being recorded and reported. A nonprofit or a government can be an entity, but departments, agencies, and programs can also be entities. A key part of the accounting and auditing process is defining first the entity. Now let's look at the three parts of the definition that help us identify an asset. Legally owned, monetary value, and objectively determined. We could ask ourselves three questions. Does the entity have legal ownership over the resource? Could the entity take out an insurance policy on the resource, for example? If the resource was stolen, is the entity the party that would suffer the loss? Number two, does the resource have a monetary value? Financial documents deal with monetary value. That's not to say everything that benefits an entity has to have a monetary value, but only those items with a monetary value can be reported as assets on the financial statements. So networks, customer loyalty, those are resources of potentially significant value. But if we can't assign them a monetary value, then they don't affect our financial position. And number three, is the monetary value objectively determined? The most common process for objectively determining a resource's value is when there's some kind of a financial transaction. In other words, the asset is purchased. However, the objective value of other kinds of assets, like marketable securities, can also be determined from transparent and relatively liquid markets but that's not the norm. The answer must be yes to all three of these questions for a resource to be considered an asset and to affect the entity's financial position. So what are the most common types of assets? Well, when we talk about assets, we usually try not to get too specific. We may own lots of different kinds of paper, for example, but it would be information overload in most situations to keep track of all of those different items separately in a financial statement. As such, we use the term accounts to represent different categories or groupings of assets. The level of specificity of these accounts is determined by opinions on their materiality. For example, one organization may have lots of different kinds of equipment and want to report them separately in different larger groups. But most organizations will just report one large category of equipment. The most common types of assets are listed here on the screen. Cash and cash equivalents. Cash equivalents are like shares in money market accounts. Investments. Receivables. The most generic category for receivables is an accounts receivable, which are payments that the entity expects to be able to collect on. But there's other more specific kinds of receivables like grants, donations, and taxes. Supplies are resources that are consumed in the delivery of services, and inventory are resources that are sold or delivered to customers. Rights may include property rights, water rights, copyrights, prepaid accounts. These are advanced payments for services or goods that have not yet been provided or delivered. And then equipment, buildings, land. You should note that assets can be tangible or intangible. Supplies, inventory, equipment, these are tangible. They can be touched and observed, 
but their value is still expressed by legal records such as bills of sale. Other assets are intangible. Investments, receivables, rights, prepaid accounts, those are, these are intangible usually. And these assets cannot be directly touched or observed, but their existence and their value are determined still by legal documents such as titles of ownership, bills of sale. You should also note that assets differ in the degree to which they have short-term or long-term benefits, and as such, how easy it is to use an asset to perform short-term financial transactions. In, in other words, how liquid are the assets. The asset accounts on the screen are written in order of the most liquid, generally, to the least liquid. Some assets are exceptionally helpful in engaging in quick transactions, most notably cash. In fact, a common definition of liquidity is the ease by which an asset can be converted into cash. Other assets are more difficult to use in a transaction. Land or equipment, for example, are relatively illiquid. How does an entity increase or decrease its asset value? So let's return to the fundamental equation of accounting to think through this ans the answer to this question. First, an entity could gain an asset by trading it for another asset. One asset account traded for another asset account. The most common is a cash account being traded for another account. Cash could be exchanged, for example, for supplies, in which case the cash account goes down and the supplies account goes up. Inventory could be returned to a store for a full cash refund. The key concept here is that purchasing an asset by exchanging it for another asset, at least in accrual accounting, does not reduce the total value of assets. It just trades one asset account for another. It may change the liquidity of the assets, but it does not destroy, consume, or use up resources available altogether. Second, an entity could gain an asset by borrowing it. This happens when an entity obtains legal possession over monetary resources, such as cash or supplies, but the entity is not paid for those resources. Instead, they have an invoice or bill that needs to be paid. In this case, an asset value increases by the same amount that the liability values increase. An entity could also lose an asset by pay paying back the liability. In this case, the loss in asset value simply reduces the claims that other parties had on the organization's assets. Imagine that a nonprofit purchases $200 in paper with store credit. The paper is an asset. The nonprofit has legal ownership over it. The paper has a monetary value that can be objectively determined, so it's an asset. The $200 increase in assets is balanced in the fundamental equation of accounting by a $200 increase in liabilities. In this case, it's an increase in the supplies account on the asset side and an increase in the account's payable account on the liability side. Now, if the nonprofit pays the bill with cash, the liability account will go away as well as $200 in asset value from the cash account. The third way that assets can increase or decrease is by offsetting entries on the owner's equity side. This happens when assets are earned, which is an increase, or assets are consumed, which is a decrease. Let's talk about earnings. The entity could have, for example, performed a service and been paid for it. It could receive a donation. It could even realize a gain in the market value of their investment account. This means that the asset value didn't just shift from one asset account to another, nor did the asset value increase it by borrowing money from an outside entity. This is a newly earned resource and therefore increases the owner's equity. Increases to owner's equity are called revenues. Revenues is now a technical term for us. When you hear it again, you'll need to think increase in owner's equity. When an asset is consumed, it decreases our asset accounts. This happens when asset accounts decrease without an increase in another asset account or without reducing claims from some outside party. The resource value is gone since it doesn't decrease the liability claims. The resource consumption has to be reflected as a reduction in the owner's equity. Decreases to owner's equity in a cruel basis of accounting 
are called expenses. Expenses is also now a technical term. And when you hear it again, you need to think consumption or decrease in owner's equity in accrual accounting.